Okay, so my chemical romance is split up, and I'm kind of getting the vibe here that a lot of guys just don't care. Hey, that's cool. I, on the other hand, am a huge fan of the band. So with that said, you can only imagine my mindset. I was overwhelmed when I read this little message saying, band's done. Um, first thing I thought to myself is, it's taken out of context, clearly. Um, where's the credibility behind this? It's an early April Fool's Day joke, right? Wrong. In fact, uh, lead singer Gerard Way followed up that statement with a real long message explaining that it was just time to move on, you know, there was no catalyst serving as to the demise of MCR. And it was pretty positive, you know, because you have to keep in mind there's now children and uh, uh, marriage, you know, all these other obligations. And you can see that there's this uh, creative um, mindset still stemming elsewhere for them. Gerard Way was actually pursuing a Fender Princeton amp at the time, so that's pretty cool. Uh, it was really poetic and I liked it, and it was shown that he respected the fans as much as the fans respected the, the band as a whole. You know, um, so I'm just going to be voicing some of my opinions, just some info, really. Feel free to watch. If you don't want to, hey, go for it. Um, so this is the first album, and this is sort of the primordial ooze for what My Chemical Romance is and would be about. So this was like a, a hardcore album, you know, Northeast hardcore kind of stuff, but with a lot of pop sensibility. Not too off from the fashion of what, you know, Nirvana's Bleach was. It was the... Uh, the beginning of the band where it is noisy and, and uh, grungy and it did move on to more pop acceptable kind of material so this was basically the foundation for the band and Gerard Way started the idea of My Chemical Romance after being deeply disturbed by 9-11 you know who can blame him and I believe at the time he's working as an intern for Cartoon Network and he decided he wanted to express himself musically so boom here comes My Chemical Romance and they're they're great musicians, I feel. Um, they, they don't get the respect they deserve. This album, a lot of the clean guitar is kind of chattery. It's still rhythmic. The distorted guitars are noisy. The drums, you know, sound lo-fi. And the lyrics are a bit dark. And so with their next album, they're more cohesive. Um, but this is still a great album. And a lot of people actually cite this as to being perhaps their best. I feel their third album was their best. I'll get to that in a moment. It's on red vinyl. Um, I move my records around a lot. I don't tend to listen to this mainly because I don't have my turntable in this room right now. I have it on my iPod, that is, I should say. So the next album was Three Sweet Shoes for Revenge, and that's when people began to notice them. Um, and they focused more on the image versus the sound, you know, the sight opposing the sound. And so people instantly decided this hate, love or hate decision with them. Um, a lot of people steered me away from them saying, you see them, they, they did the music video with the corpse makeup, you know, um, you, you won't like them, you won't like them, it's like Green Day, but worse, and it's like, I don't think Green Day's bad, I just think they're Green Day, I guess. So, their next album, Three Sweet Cheers for Revenge, was, uh, it, the musicianship was a lot tighter, they knew what they are doing, the songs had a cleaner beginning and end. And it was still pretty dark, it was a concept album, but there's a lot of funny stuff in there, and I liked seeing that, because in the 70s and 80s, you'd get a lot of kind of goofy, light-hearted songs, and with the advent of grunge and the push uh, for seeking out more and more grunge artists being dubbed like post-grunge and, and contemporary rock in general, you begin to, to drift towards a, a darker soundscape, and a lot of these artists, I'm not critiquing them, you know, but, uh, you know, Papa Roach and Three Days Grey, Seether, Reagan Benjamin... It's really decimating music, it's depressing. But I feel a lot of people needed that in their life. A lot of people needed something they could relate to that, that's to the point. You know, it's blunt, it's how people feel. And so it's relatable. And My Couple of Romance was no different. They were doing pretty much the same thing with the, with the slightly different sound. Um, so when you think of it like that, it's sort of like how somebody likes the blues, you said they can work out their blues, you know, or they play the blues to get the blues out, whatever. Um, Three Sweet Cheers for Revenge had a lot of a lot of short songs, a lot of punkish songs, a lot of hardcore stuff, but still under the reins of uh, pop. So with their next album, it was totally mind blowing to hear. It was pretty much a different band. It was more classic rock influence. This is when I really, really got into them because one day during the days of MySpace, you know, so 2006, I, I got home. Um, 
in October one night and I, I listened to a song on the background of somebody's page and I said to myself, holy crap, this is really good. Who is it? It's My Chemical Romance. Uh, okay, somebody mislabeled this. Not My Chemical Romance, right? Right? And I Google it. Okay, it is. Cool. And they're really freaking good, evidently, and everybody apparently lied to me. So, uh, the first track on here, the end, sounds a bit like Pink Floyd's In the Flesh. And it, this is a concept album, too. And uh, I couldn't believe how good this was. There's a lot of cool dual guitars, uh, classic rock voiced, heavy bloated marshals, you know, going off, the stacks. And I, I couldn't help but like it so much that the following year when they released the box set here, I bought it. You know, and this is, um, these are two hardcover books. Real, real freaky artwork here. Um... And I, I read as much as I could about it. I really liked it. I couldn't believe something on the radio was so engaging. And my perception enabled me to go back to a lot of radio-based artists and, and give them uh, a better look, I guess. And this album is really introspective. It's a the concept, I believe, is about a dying cancer patient. A little uh, Studio Les Paul. I really like Studio Les Pauls. So that might be the custom, actually. That was the custom. My bad. But I really liked uh, the concept. Cancer patient dying. Um, it, it's it's bleak in the beginning, and it voices many of those internal frustrations as mentioning earlier. That teenage angst, you know, feeling like you never fulfilled the things in life you should have, and now you're not being given the chance. You gotta you gotta move on. But how can you do that? How can you accept? Um, and so some of the songs sound like they could have been like World War II like themes, or maybe it was a mental battle. You don't know. I guess it's kind of up to your interpretation. And some even see the album as uh, instead of being so introspective and reflective, it's actually about somebody who's really close to them who's dying, and that um, how can they let go? And so it kind of rever uh, inverses that that feel to it and it ends on a positive note to, to honestly get back up to, to feel like you can keep going and I think that's what pulled in a lot of people too to the band was that that positivity at the end so with that said though they were dressed in baton jackets I mean one of these images here I think really kind of gives you an idea of what the band is right you know you kind of tell it's flamboyant and there's nothing wrong with that but a lot of people oh, I'll listen to metal bro I don't know I'm here. So they didn't give them a fair listen, you know, they're being dubbed pop, punk, and emo. You know, so when you're shuffled into that deck, you're not going to pull out, I guess, the integrity of many of the classic rock artists, but they were pulling off Queen and Pink Floyd and, and uh, Nirvana mixed in, and something all their own. So for a while, it seemed like the band was trying to prove to others, hey, we're, we're punk, we're rough, we're cool. And so that's what they were getting ready to do with their, their following release. It was going to be that that uh, that album that to testify against. And so from 2006 to 2010, there really wasn't a new album because I, I think that they realized, what are we trying to prove to others? If they don't like us, they don't like us. Let's do what we want to do. You know, let's uh, pursue the the integrity that we already have. People like us. You know, our, our, our clique of fans happen to appreciate us. Some of them, yeah, are a little bit rambunctious and uh, perhaps give us a bad image. But who cares? They like us. It could be just for looks or the sound. And I, that's what I believe anyway. So they scrap trying to do that in your face. We're going to prove to you that you're wrong kind of album. And instead of release Danger Days, uh, you know, the, the True Lives or the Fabulous Killjoys or whatever. Makes me think of the Fabulous Thunderbirds, you know, Steve Ray Vaughn's brother, Jimmy Vaughn. Um... And that album was just wacky, colorful, all over the place, explosive. It, it felt like a comic book. It was funny. Um, the music was really saturated. The production values were off the chart, just wacky. And it was meant to be some post-apocalyptic looking world with these like flamboyant looking rebels with crazy red hair and... To me, that signified that they, they found who they were. They were able to go from celebrating death to celebrating life. And I read that as a YouTube comment, and I couldn't help but agree more with that. You know, instead of uh, all the pressures of others, you know, they were able to just say, we enjoy this. We're going to ride our freak flag out. And the album even ends with the Star Spangled Banner going crazy. And 
that's the sort of stuff that I want to see on the radio, well, I guess here. Um, so that's, that's pretty much My Chemical Romance to me in a nutshell. I got a real kick out of their career, I enjoyed their music, and I hope to see uh, some of the, the stuff that they may release as individual artists or if there's ever a uh, get-together, I'd be interested.